Hey guys, uh, welcome to the video on evidence of chemical reactions. Okay, uh, so next week we're going to be doing a bunch of chemical reactions, and I need us to be able to uh, know did a chemical reaction actually happen? Yes or no? You know, sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not obvious. Sometimes you might think something was a chemical reaction when really it wasn't. So uh, we'll take a look at this. Um, we'll learn the five signs that we had a chemical reaction. We'll take a look at um, one chemical reaction that we won't do in class, uh, and then we'll kind of wrap it up. So I'm uh, looking at this picture, a bunch of fireworks. That is a ton of chemical reactions, right? So lots of combustion, uh, which is things uh, lighting on fire, burning. So indicators of a chemical reaction is we have emission of light or heat, which means it'll give off light, it'll give off heat. Um, and fireworks definitely do that, right? Um, fire also is an example. Formation of a gas. Um, fireworks also do this, but here's an example right here. We could say that's, you know, vinegar and baking soda. We get the CO2 bubbles. Uh, formation of a precipitate. A precipitate is a solid that would appear from the liquid and then filter out. Um, so if I mix two liquids together and then a solid appears um, and, and sinks to the bottom of that, of that test tube, then we would know there was a chemical reaction. Um, a color change. So fireworks also do that. And an emission of odor, so if it smells, right? So stinky feet. All right, so all chemical reactions have two parts. Uh, they have a reactant, right? The reactants are like the ingredients. It's what you start with, okay? So it's whatever you're starting with, and the products is whatever you end up with. So like if I'm making a cake, the ingredients are the reactant. Um, my cake is the product. If I'm eating the cake, right, and I'm going to break it down, then the cake is the reactant, and uh, we don't need to talk about the products. Um... Sweet. So like if you see the chemical reaction, right, we've got the left side of the arrow, we've got the right side of the arrow, reactants are on the left, uh, products are on the right. Um, so what actually happens in a chemical reaction is the ways the atoms are joined is changed. So last week when we were doing this and you guys were doing the um, balancing equations FET lab, I was kind of reiterating that a lot to where like when you make a cake, right, you put all the ingredients in a bowl, you mix it up, you put that cake in the oven, and when it comes out, it looks different, right? It doesn't look like it did when you put it in, but everything that is in that cake is what you put in the cake, right? It's not like all of a sudden while it was in the oven, some sugar just disappeared or like all of a sudden, um, like it just gained peanuts. Like it just, while it was in the oven, it gained peanuts. No, like everything that was there is still there. It's just changed. Okay, so um, we're not creating or we're not destroying anything. <clears throat> um, so this is just kind of ways you could say an equation is happening. When we're looking at balancing chemical equations, we're going to be looking at this, right? Like this down. This is what we were doing last week. Um, but when you guys were working on those uh, balancing equations, and I was kind of saying them out loud for those of you guys that are in class, um, like I don't just say like H2 plus N2 equals NH3. No, I was saying like hydrogen plus nitrogen, nitrogen reacts to form ammonia. Okay, so kind of just trying to use those words, but when we're looking at the equation, we're looking at those letters. Um, so this is a little bit more advanced. Um, we're not going to look at this a ton, but when you're doing a chemical equation, you can say like, are you mixing solids, liquids, gases? So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll put that. Um, and then we also want to know like on the reactant, like let's say you're a chemist and you're working in a lab, you're making some medicine and you think that you're going to be making like a block of chlorine, but it's actually a chlorine gas. Like that would be super deadly for you. You would need to know that. Um, that would be one way they could say that was they could put these symbols. Um, the L, sometimes you'll also see um, <clears throat> like the AQ and L um, when you're very... When you're, when you're getting into high school and college, um, that'll be a big difference. A lot of times, some teachers will say that liquid and aqueous are the same. Um, that's not the same. It's just that if it was dissolved in water. So like if you took calcium chloride and it was dissolved in water, that would be an aqueous solution of calcium chloride. Whereas if you had like a block of calcium chloride, it would be a solid. Okay? So that's different than liquid calcium chloride because if we took the solid and we heated it up, we would get liquid 
but that's not what they're saying, right? They're saying that it's a solid dissolved in water, so it's aqueous. That's beyond what you guys need to know anyways. All right. Um, what is a catalyst? A catalyst is something that speeds up a reaction. So when we do elephant toothpaste, we will be using a catalyst. So when we have a reaction, there will be an energy change. So exothermic reactions release energy. Okay, usually it's heat. Um, endothermic reactions absorb energy. They absorb heat from the surroundings. So like when you feel an exothermic reaction, it feels hot. When you feel an endothermic reaction, it would feel cold because it's pulling the heat from around the system. Um, this we don't really need to do, but we were talking about this last week when we were balancing, right? Some people said, why is H, N, and O always together? Um, <clears throat> they're diatomic elements. Um, they never want to be alone. Like it's easier for them to bond if they're a pair. That's the easiest way to look at it. So that's that. Um, so let's take a look at a chemical equation that happens in real life. Not at my house because I don't have real silver stuff, but uh, maybe somebody does. But um, like if you have fancy silverware and it starts to get that tarnish, that like yellow look to it, what's actually happening is that your silver um, is becoming silver sulfide because it's reacting with sulfur in the air, right? So that's just a chemical reaction, kind of like when we were talking last week or two weeks ago, I forget, about um, the bikes rusting. That's just iron reacting with oxygen, right? So this is the same idea. Silver reacting with sulfur does something similar. All right, so when we're balancing equations, we're talking about balancing the atoms that go in. So as many hydrogens go in, the hydrogens need to come out. As many oxygens go in, oxygens need to come out, right? And they all look different, like H and O are separate here, but right here it's together. That's fine. We just need to have the same numbers of each. So if we balance this equation, right, 2H2 plus O2 equals 2H2O. Why? Well, if we did the, the balancing game, right, where we're thinking about those atoms, H2 is two little hydrogen atoms, right? So two of those would be four hydrogen atoms. Over here, 2H2O, H2O is an O with two H's, so two of those would be four H's. Right here's O2, that's two. Two O's, two O's, we're balanced. If that doesn't make sense or doesn't sound familiar, that means you did not do your lab last week. All right, so this, I'm um, just going to kind of show you um, a little example of aluminum reacting. I think it's like iodine oxide or something. I don't really remember, um, but this is a cool one where you can just put them together and they will make an exothermic combustion reaction. So you added the foil and that's what happened. Uh, oh, it's liquid bromine. Okay, so uh, aluminum metal reacts with liquid bromine and it creates a solid aluminum bromide. So they actually combine to make one thing, right? So we started with, oops, foil and liquid. And by the end, you have one solid. To look at that equation, we start with one AL and then we have two BRs and we end up with one AL and three BRs, all right? This is the whole thing where it's an even odd. And the way I, what I mean by that is like BR2 is always going to be even. Whether I put a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 here, it doesn't matter because it's going to be times 2, it's going to be even. Whereas right here is times 3, right? So that's BR3, so we have an even and an odd. So if this is a 1 or a 3 or a 5 or a 7, this is always going to be odd. This can never be odd, okay? So this is going to have to be a 2 or a 4 or a 6 or an 8. So if we thought about it, if I put a two right here, we had two ALBR3, right? That means I have two ALs, so I can put a two right here, and I would have six BRs, so I could put a three right here, because three times two is six, just like two times three was six. So let's see, boom, 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 got it. All right, sweet. So. Um, yeah, we'll be doing some chemical reactions. I need you to be able to look at it and say, yeah, chemical reaction happened. 
what are the evidence of a chemical reaction? Well, was there lighter heat? Um, was there a gas formation? Was there a precipitate form form a formation of a precipitate? Was there a color change? Um, did it smell? Right. So um, that's what we're going to be looking at, and hopefully you guys get caught up so you can do those labs with us. Alrighty, have a good one.